Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to watch, you are about to witness, the movie called Sky Raiders. It's 12 thrilling powered chapters. 12 thrill powered chapters. I don't know if I said it right. Starring Robert Armstrong and Billy Hallop. Former World War flying ace Robert Dayton, head of Sky Raiders Incorporated, has created a revolutionary person suit plane that is set to be into production by the United States government. Ruthless international spy Felix Lynx wants to steal the prototype in order to sell it to a foreign government. And he will stop at nothing to carry out his sinister scheme. With pragmatic partner Ed Carey and the beautiful secretary Mary Blake, Dayton dodges doom and disaster throughout 12 death-defying chapters. Sky Raiders features prolific character actor Robert Armstrong of King Kong fame in the role of Ed Carey. Bill Hallop, famous as a member of the original Dead End Kids, plays Air Youth member Tim Bryant. Renowned screen villain Eduardo Cianetti, Cianelli, rather, who plays Felix Lynx, is best remembered for his diabolical roles in the mysterious Dr. Satan and the Mummy's Hand, foreign correspondent Steve Keys, to Bald Plate and dozens of other characters. You are about to witness Sky Raiders starting now. And this time I promise it will play through all the way. Phil, you're back from California to explain why I haven't received the plans for Dayton's new Sky Raider pursuit ship. I tried to get them, Mr. Lynx, but I... I don't want alibis. I want the plans of that ship. I had you made controller and treasurer of the company so you could get it. But Dayton has no plans for it. At least, not on paper. No plans? Impossible. That's true. That leaves only one thing for us to do, then. Cannon, I want you to go back to California with Hinchfield. They are testing that ship tomorrow for the army. Get it and fly it to our own hangar. Get the plane itself. But how? You're not here to ask questions but to obey orders. That plane is necessary to the success of our cause. 
It is your job to get it. That's all. Department is calling Captain Dayton. All right, put him on. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what I thought. Apparently it was. Yes, sure. And thanks. It was the name of the most famous pursuit squadron in the world war. Sky Raiders. What an outfit of young daredevils. Captain Bob Dayton, the designer of this new ship the Army's thinking of buying, was the commander. Well, I've heard a lot about Dayton, but I've never met him. You'll meet him today. Fine-looking chap. Quiet, unassuming, but what a flyer. Get out of here. I said get out of here. But, Bob, it's not only for your own sake. If anything happens to you, what becomes of Sky Raiders? All right, all right. But get out of here before I change my mind. Well, now you're talking sense. Now I can be happy again. Enjoy life. Be merry and bright. Get out! So I won my bet. Well, it sounded like it, didn't it? Certainly did. Well, you didn't. Dayton's not going to fly that ship. Do you mean that? Did he promise? Well, as close to a promise as Bob ever came. So don't forget, you got a date tonight. I've never been so happy to keep a date in my life. Fine thing. I have to win a bet to get you to go out with me. Why is that, Mary? We'll discuss that later. You go tell Proctor to get ready to make that flight. It's almost 10 now. Now, don't dust me off. There was more to that bet, remember? We'll discuss that later, too. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello. General Fletcher. Hello, Carrie. You, uh, are you to receive congratulations? Well, uh, not yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lieutenant Carey, one of those young Sky Raider daredevils I was telling you about. This is Captain uh, Long, Ed. Glad to know you, Captain. Lieutenant Carey. Captain's going to help me decide if Dayton's new plane comes up to specifications. Oh, fine. If you'll excuse me now, General, I've got to get a pilot for the test flight. Miss Blake will take care of you. Oh, yeah. Well, what do you mean? Isn't uh, Dayton going to fly the ship? I believe Captain Dayton is going to confine his activities to the ground from now on. But perhaps he'd better tell you about that himself. Yes? General Fletcher and Captain Long will see you, Captain Dayton. Show them in. Yes, sir. I thought maybe Captain Dayton wouldn't be so busy today. I suppose you spent all your railroad fare home. Well, you gotta take a chance if you wanna get ahead in this world. Couldn't I just see him for a minute? Listen, you don't want me to feel mean and hateful, do you? Of course not. Well, then don't beg me to do something I can't do. How many boys do you suppose asked to see Captain Dayton? Are there many? Hundreds of them. And if he sees one, he has to see them all. Oh, I never thought about that. Well, then our problem is to get you home. Where did you say it was? Denver. Well, couldn't I just see him for a minute? I'll buy a ticket for you on the transport. If you promise to use it. Everybody thinks I ought to quit. Think I'm too old for testing. I think they're crazy. You're too valuable to aviation to be risking your neck off. But I do hope you have a good test pile on that. Yes, Proctor will give it a workout. Good. Suppose we get about it, huh? All right, I... Uh... I may be detained for a few moments, but uh, Miss Blake will take you out and you can have a look at the plane. Miss Blake. Yes, Captain Dayton. Tell Proctor I want to see him and then take General Fletcher and Captain Long out to the field. 
Yes, sir. Yes? Captain Dayton would like to see Proctor in his office. Okay. Hello? Yes? Uh, a one-way ticket to Denver for Timothy Bryant. And a charger to our account, please. Thank you. I'll pay you back someday. Of course you will, Tim. And by the way, Captain Dayton is going to be in Denver next week for the Air Youth of American model ship trial. I'll see to it that he meets you then. Oh, gee, thank you, Miss Blake. There's a general in there getting fidgety, so bye-bye. Bye-bye. the way it'll fly and how it'll look. Who's your pilot? A flyer named Proctor. You think he can tear it apart, Kerry? Well, if it can be torn apart, he'll do it. Well, that's what I want to find out. Where the blaze is today? Uh, he should be here any moment. Well, just to make sure, suppose you go and get him, young lady. Yes, sir. your plane, Gary. Fine blazes, don't you keep this place guarded? We do. It's impossible for an outsider to get in here. So I can see. We better call up the police and tell them your ship's been stolen. Come on, Bob. But General... How should I know, Miss Blake? After all, I'm only the controller and treasurer of the company. That's right. You wouldn't know anything, would you? I'm certainly told nothing. What are you doing, Miss Blake? Calling the police. What's the idea? The idea is Dayton's flying the ship. Dayton? Yeah, we framed it. ship I ever saw, Gary. I know that. What I want to know is who's flying the ship. You really want to know? Yes, I really do. I'll give you one guess. You don't mean... Who else could fly a ship like that? You mean that uh, Dayton's flying it? He certainly is. And that means you lose your bet. I tell you, they got this place patrolled, Captain. So they have it patrolled. Stop bothering me. All right, I know she's fast. Get about something else. They must have heard you, General.
written. She'll do 7,000 straight up. Ship carry. That is if it's uh, maneuverable. Uh, you're going to learn the meaning of that word. Understand? We've got to get it. What do you think now, General? Superb. Superb. jokes. Maybe a joke to him, but it's hard on my nerves. He's gonna do it again. You see, Captain, while I'm in about that Sky Reader gang?
Dayton this time, General. He's down. No, if he'd have crashed, we'd have hurt him. You tell Dayton when he's through playing games to let me know. Come on, Captain. Tell Dayton when he's through playing games to let me know. Come on. Take it easy, Mary. I'm all right, Ed. What happened? Well, 
He wasn't in the ship. Wasn't in it? Well, who was? Or was it just flying itself? No. It seems he was jumped by three men and hit over the head. And when he came to, a few minutes later, both the plane and the men were gone. Well, then one of them was in the ship. Yes. From now on, he'll have a permanent set of wings. That's the kind of espionage and sabotage I was talking about, Captain Dayton. He knows what you're talking about. He was in the Army during the World War. What I want to know is, how long it will be before we can have another test flight? I can't tell you until I go over the ship. All right. Let me know when you're ready. In the meantime, take my advice and stay on the ground. You're too valuable a man to aviation. You don't mind if I take a little spin once in a while, do you? Uh, just for the fresh air? Come on, Captain. We're wasting our time. Yes, that's right. Yes, now, now get this. 2587SY6154Z. And that's it. Yes, yes, it was unfortunate. Field. Stupid imbeciles. If you keep on slamming up telephones, Felix, you're going to ruin my hearing. That's one thing I cannot tolerate. Stupidity. Shall I decode this for you? You don't have to. They had the ship and crashed it. Now we'll have to go back to the beginning again. You mean the plans for the ship, of course? Naturally. What else could I mean? You might have meant Captain Dayton. What are you talking about? Well, Hinchfield said that Captain Dayton keeps all of his plans in his head. All right, then we get his head. That's what I meant. That Captain's on the shortwave radio for me. And give him this message. 32, 47, SPT-8, 164L. 2WZ, H1962, RAM, 3, BTX, 7, BY5. Weather clear. We'll report later. Decode this. He says to bring Dayton to him. He must be crazy. Maybe he is. But we're crazier for working for him. Where are you going? To have a talk with Hinchfield. Uh, dear Mr. Williams. Yes? Your ship is ready, Captain Dayton. Oh, all right. I'll be right up. Look here, Bob. Why won't you tell us where you're going? Because you and Miss Blake worry too much. Well, how do you think we'll feel if we don't know where you're going? You've no right to take risks. No risks, just straight flying. I'm not talking about flying. I'm talking about the agents of every foreign government. Now, not all of them, Ed. Look, will you be a good guy and get out of here? All right, go ahead and kill yourself. The Army will appreciate that. They don't give a hoot whether they get those planes or not. Oh, Mr. Carey, is uh, Captain Dayton in? Yes, yeah, sure he's in. But he won't be in very long. Uh, why? Where's he going? He won't tell me. You ask him. Oh, I don't like to bother him if he's in a hurry. You're the financial man, aren't you? Yes. And you have the interest of the stockholders to protect, haven't you? Most assuredly. What do you think their stock will be worth if the guys that are after Dayton get him? Is somebody trying to get him? Is somebody trying to get him? I give up. Have a good time in Denver. So you know where I'm going? A good secretary should always know where her boss is going. You're a swell secretary, Mary. Uh, hold Carrie's hand for me, will you? Not literally. Here. Well, what's this? A favor I'm asking. Open it when you get there. Okay. And promise me something? Sure, what is it? Not to fly one of those ships. 
They're not safe. <laughs> okay, Mary. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. Hinchfield. Oh, he's worse than a Neil. Where is he going? That's a secret between Captain Dayton and myself. I have a right to know. I am the... I know. You're the controller of the business. But I'm his secretary. And when the boss says mum's the word, you couldn't get it out of me if you blasted. You rather like Captain Dayton, don't you? <laughs> well, that's putting it a bit strong, Mr. Hinchfield. But I guess you could say I liked him a little. Too bad. He's heading east. Why did you say too bad? What? Oh, oh, oh nothing. Nothing. I, uh, excuse me, please. So he comes in without no landing gear. Does he crack her up? He does not. He sets her down as light as a feather. Yep, sure great flyer. Say, what's he doing here anyway? Oh, some kind of tests over at Crane Field. Oh. my Sky Raiders scholarship. <laughs> and I thought this was a good plane. One of the tragedies of aviation, eh, Captain Dayton? Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a real tragedy for him. The hazards of competition, Captain. Well, I guess I'm not going to let a little failure like this stop me. Come on, you're a slow kid, sis. Come on. Whose model was it? Mm, let me see. Timothy Bryan. Bryan? Yes. Shall we get on with the next trial? 
Uh, would you mind having someone tell Brian I'd like to see him? No, no, no. I'll be glad to. Felix, your men have failed you again and you've elected me. Where will I find Captain Dayton? He will be at the Continental Broadcasting Studio in Denver tonight at 8 o'clock. All right. I'm on my way. Head hunting. <laughs> Best of luck, darling. I'm counting on you. I consider it a great honor to have won a Sky Raider scholarship. And for all the members of the Air Youth of America, I want to thank Captain Dayton for his kind cooperation. It's a pleasure to present scholarships to such fine future aviators. I only hope they'll be called upon to use their talents in peace and not in war. And now I want you to meet another fine young future aviator, Mr. Tim Bryant. Tim didn't win a scholarship this afternoon because he had a little tough luck at the trials, but he has something coming to him which he may like much better. Will you come here, Tim, please? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tim Bryant. Will you uh, say something, Tim? Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> Tim, my secretary, instructed me to look you up when I came to Denver. She said that you were a friend of hers and a fine young airman. This afternoon, you proved to me that you were. How would you like to go to work for me at Sky Raiders this summer? What's the matter with the guys? Are you getting soft-headed? Quiet. Oh, boy. Gee, uh, would I? Well, I'd like to have you, Tim. When is school out? Saturday, but I can go now. <laughs> no, no, I think we'd better wait until school is over. Hey, what's your idea? What's the matter, Murray? Hey, I believe you're in love with the guy. Oh, don't be silly. Maybe I'm not so silly after all. Listen, Ed. Will you be a good guy and go home? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, lovely. Now, do you think he'd be crazy enough to fly back in this? I think he'd be crazy enough to do anything. Well, I'm going to try and stop him. Thanks, Mary. Good night. Good night. Apparently, weather reports don't mean anything to Dayton. We ground the transports, and he goes right ahead. What's the angle on that girl he took with him? Search me. He certainly was anxious to get to the coast. Anxious? <laughs> I call it hysterical. Well, from now on, she's Dayton's problem. Come on. Captain Dayton left here 15 minutes ago with a woman passenger. Woman? What's he doing with a woman? I'm afraid you'll have to ask Captain Dayton that. You don't think I won't? Thank you. That is all. No, it ain't all. Where do I get a hold of that crazy hairbrained nincompoop? Get him. Keep after him when you do. Flying on a storm ain't bad enough. He's got to take some dizzy lizzy with him. Sky Raiders calling Captain Dayton. I don't blame you for wanting to get back to the coast in a hurry. She's all I have left. If anything happened to Mother, I... No, no, take it easy. Keep that chin up. Everything will be all right. You're very kind, Captain Dayton. I had no right to impose on you. I must have been quite hysterical. Oh, forget it. Oh, there's our storm. You're not going to be frightened, are you? I'll try hard not to be. Sky Raiders calling Captain Dayton. Sky Raiders calling Captain Dayton. Go ahead. 
What's the matter with that guy, anyhow? Keep after him. Sky Raiders calling Captain Dayton. Captain Dayton, don't you think we'd better land? We're really safer up here. However, I'll find out how the weather is ahead of us. Captain Dayton calling Sky Raiders. Captain Dayton calling Sky Raiders. Go ahead, Sky Raiders. I'll take that. All right, you halfwit. What do you think you're doing? Lying around in a thunderstorm with a gal. Who is she, anyhow? Nobody you know, Mr. Carey. I just called up to let you know where I am. It's raining a little up here. How is it down there? Yes, we're having a little storm. It's a little drizzle. Nothing to worry about if you got enough gas for 48 hours. I hope your lady friend appreciates your getting rid of this. You better take something for that disposition of yours, Mr. Carey. I'll keep in touch with you from time to time. So long. What a guy. What a night for a match. He's having a fine time, taking a joyride with a gal.
I'm sorry, but you put it on that basis. Now, scat.
slow down. Small town cops are bad medicine. circling overhead. Probably Kerry. Step on it. anything foolish. You're a valuable man to aviation. Come on, Dayton, get in the car. You can't scare me with a gun. I wouldn't be any good to your dead. You wouldn't want anything to happen to the girl and the kid, would you? Bring them along. Come on, you two. Hurry up. Let him go. officer in Nevada in a few minutes. Walker, turn off the next side road.
want those men in that car. Well, I haven't got them, but I have got you for landing an airplane on a highway. You can't arrest us, Sheriff. No? <laughs> well, ain't you going to be surprised, lady? Come on. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to hear that. I'll come right over. The Royce Hotel? Yes, goodbye. That was Miss Claire. Her mother died just an hour ago. I'll let that be a lesson to you, never to misjudge people. Oh, uh, we'll finish the rest of that in the morning. I, uh, I feel sort of useless there. Doesn't seem to be anything I can do or say. You were kind to come, Captain Dayton. And I've rewarded you by being disgustingly feminine. It's quite natural for you to be upset. Well, I feel much better now, really. Isn't there anything I can do? No, nothing. Nothing at all. And I mustn't keep you any longer. I know you're a very busy man. Now, don't hesitate to call me again if I can help in any way. I won't. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Captain Dayton. An actress. Oh, never mind the compliments. Get after him. Listen, Mary, I'm not going to referee his love matches. Stop worrying and go to bed. Maybe I am a little over suspicious. Sure you are. And a little over jealous. Good night. There's a car following us, and it ain't cops. Hey, slow down. What do you think you're doing? I'm gonna give you the ride of your life. What's he driving like that for? Looks to me like he's trying to get arrested. Step on it. Slow down, or I'll drill you. Go ahead. Never lived through the crack up. Get out of here before it's too late. You know I'm going. You'll be in open country, sir. Slow down, you fool. Why don't you shoot me? side of the road and stop.
think y'all gonna do?
Isn't it funny? Oh, yes. Very funny. Come on, Mary. What's on your mind? What makes you think I have anything on my mind? I'm not stupid. For weeks I've been trying to take you out to lunch, and for weeks you've been putting me off. I have a confession to make. Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me. It's about Bob. You're going to marry him. No. I eavesdropped over the telephone. Oh, <laughs> and you heard him talking to the blonde? No. The police. The police? What did they want? He was held up last night. What? Not only that, he was kidnapped. His car was wrecked, burned. And I suppose his luck brought him through without even so much as a sin. Apparently. They have the man who held him up. They think the only motive was robbery, but I don't. Neither do I. It all ties up. The attempt to steal a pursuit ship, the Nevada business, and who knows what he hasn't told us anything about. He ought to have his head examined. He ought to have a bodyguard. You ought to insist, Ed. I? Well, maybe you're right. But it means running the risk of having a book bounced off my bean. Well, I don't know how you found out about it, but it was just an ordinary holdup that might happen to anybody. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't. How do you know that... Ah, uh, what's he use? You know, someday that luck of yours is gonna run out on you. And when it does and I've laid you away, I'm gonna get a nice quiet place in the country and raise flowers. <laughs> yes? A uh, gentleman to see him here today. Well, if it's a bodyguard, send him away. His name is Bryant. Bryant? Bryant? I don't know any Bryant. Who's he with? He's with the Sky Raiders. First name, Timothy. Timothy. Oh, Tim Bryant. Send him in. That's a lad from Denver, isn't it? Yes. What are you going to do with him? Hello, Tim. How are you? Fine, Captain Dayton. Good. Ready to go to work? You bet. I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> that funny-looking fellow over there is Ed Carey. I want you and Ed to be good friends. This is Tim Bryant, Ed. Glad to know you, Tim. Thank you, sir. Cut out the sir. Just Ed to you. I'm going to put Tim in charge of a department, Ed. Well, that's fine. You're going to what? I said I was going to put Tim at the head of a department. Sure, sure. And in a couple of weeks, you'll have my job. And then you better look out for yours. Well, so long, boss. So but long. Well, how did you like it, Ed? Don't say I told you, but that guy Dayton's gone off his nut. He's crazy. What did he do? He just told that kid he was going to make him a department head. He has fun kidding you. Why do you fall for it? He's not kidding me. He's kidding Tim. As a matter of fact, he's not kidding Tim. He's going to have him make model planes. What? You heard me. Model planes. Now, we haven't got enough trouble filling government contracts. What in the Sam Hill does he want with models? Ever hear of a wind tunnel? Sure, sure I have. That's where they test models, isn't it? Yeah, but... Oh, what's the use? This is where we do all our precision work, Tim. Say, that's all right. Good morning, Captain Dayton. Hello, Bill. The work these men are doing is more delicate than watchmaking. Let's take a closer look. Who's that, Carter? Well, that's Captain Dayton. I don't know who the kid is. So that's Captain Dayton. Yeah, I've never seen him before. No, I haven't. Hey, where are you going? I understand you're Captain Dayton. That's right. I've only been here two weeks. Well, that's fine. What are you working on? Nothing important. I didn't come here to work. What did you come here for? To kill you. You'd better give me that gun. If I did, how could I kill you? You're crazy. Get over there for that murderer. Just why do you call me a murderer? Because you kill people. In the World War, you killed them. And now you're making those infernal machines to kill more of them. But you're not going to, because I'm going to kill you. Don't try anything. Well, Tim, I guess that makes you a hero. Yeah, saving Dayton's life puts you on the same team with Lady Luck. Speaking of teams, Tim, you look to me like a good football player. Well, I played a little in high school. You never made a more timely tackle. That gent really had murder in his eye. I'm going to find out who hired that crackpot. Better hire a bodyguard to protect me while I'm in the plant. And don't take that idea of a bodyguard too lightly. 
No, this boss of yours won't believe that somebody's out gone for him. You mean somebody's after him? will interest you. Oh, really? Then maybe I'd better look my best, huh? You fly yourself, don't you? I've been flying airplanes since I was 10 years old. My father was an ace in the World War. Really? Captain Dayton. It's Claire, I believe. It wasn't so long ago I helped you mourn the loss of your mother, was it? No, it wasn't. How did you get here? By Mr. Lynx's private elevator, the helicopter. And without duress, solely on my invitation. I have found Captain Dayton quite eager to discuss business. And I don't doubt that we can reach an agreement, eh, hey, Captain? I don't see any difficulties. My business is making and selling airplanes. Would you mind if I touched you? Oh, go ahead. I'm real. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it is very funny. It's funnier than you think. You see, this isn't Captain Dayton. Not Captain Dayton? No. He merely happens to look like him. And now allow me to introduce you to the Countess Irene. Miss Claire, Countess. Miss Claire. It's always such a pleasure to meet nobility. Or is it? Felix, just who is this gentleman who could pass for Captain Dayton's twin brother? His name is Kane. John Kane, I believe. It doesn't matter. The point is, you were completely fooled, weren't you? Yes, I'll have to admit I was. Do you think the people in Dayton's factory will be fooled too, Miss Claire? Just what have you concocted in that twisted brain of yours, Felix? A little drama in which you, the Countess, and Mr. Kane will play the principal roles. Captain Dayton will also have a part. A very tragic one, I hope. <laughs> exactly what is my role? A secretary, in this. The Sky Raiders Incorporated. Good morning, Mr. Hinchfield. What are you doing here? I'm your new secretary. Odd, isn't it? But I don't need a secretary. Felix Lynx disagrees with you. Keep quiet. I know what a remarkable effect that name has. How did you get in here? Captain Dayton is so kind and sympathetic when a poor, penniless girl needs a job. So, good morning, Mr. Hedgefield. Oh, good morning, Miss Blake. Uh, it was quite thoughtful of Captain Dayton to supply me with a secretary. Yes, Captain Dayton would like to speak to you. I guess I'd better help you get used to the new office routine. Would you? Now I call that stretching charity a little far. And don't you make any cracks about jealousy. Me? I'm still stunned. Two luncheon dates in a week. I can't get over it. Well, have you ever heard of the Countess Irene? Sure. She's an English aviatrix. Captain Dayton received a personal letter from her today. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> you worrying about the Countess. She's making a transcontinental speed run for the benefit of war relief. Hey, Countess. Hey, wake up. Yes? Where are we? All right. 
right, but I wish you wouldn't wake me in the middle of that kind of dream again. you in the army, Countess. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nice line, Countess. Now, if you'll just say a few words to the folks, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a treat in store for you. Your own Captain Dayton is going to give you a rare demonstration of my play. Whoa. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't disappoint them, Captain. Oh, why didn't you give me some warning? Because you'd have run away. <laughs> <laughs> Where's he going? It's your question. You answer it. Here he comes. Hey, King, come on up. There must be an easier way to make a living than this. With squawking. Shoot the field. So what do you think of Sky Raiders so far? Here we go.
John. Here he comes. Hey, Kane, come on out. There must be an easier way to make a living than this. With squawking. Shoot the field. Exactly as Lynx planned it, but I think it'll do. I'd say it was better than Lynx planned it. Now, there's no Dayton. Unless you're afraid of ghosts. Ken, it looks as though you've just become a successful airplane manufacturer. You think I can get away with his impersonation of Dayton? If you don't, it won't be because you don't look enough like him. It'll be because you haven't got the intelligence. Hey, hey, what's the idea? That's what I meant by intelligence. You couldn't have jumped out of that plane without getting mussed up. Throw some dirt in his hair and smear his face. You're getting plenty. Well, I'm going to get more. You said it, Kane. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Except for one thing more. A final touch. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> I guess that answers his question. Oh, you won't talk, huh? <laughs> Get out the comedy, Hess. Yeah. Let's drag him down the canyon a ways. Now, yeah, this is all right. Something there. Come on, let's get out of here. Someplace. Oh, smoke. Yeah, it could be a burning plane.
don't see how he could get out of that thing alive. Yeah, it looks pretty bad. Maybe he jumped. Maybe Lady Luck was with him. Let's have a look around. Mr. Carey. Well, he's not dead, but he's pretty well busted up. How he ever got out of that flaming coffin, I don't know. <laughs> Suppose you think I'm nutty. Well, I guess I am for worrying about him. Me worrying about him with his luck. Okay, get the stretcher. Maybe this will keep him on the ground for a while. This is sure a sweet little job. How'd you like to be given out airplanes? Never mind a plane, lady. Take two. He had to do something for the Countess. He cracked hers up. Yeah, that's the crazy part about it. Captain Dayton, as a rule, doesn't crack up ships. Let him know the plane's ready, will you? OK, you take care of the spark plugs, and I will give your regards to the Countess. Yeah, you do that, Gaston. Yes, Captain Dayton. Isn't that ship ready yet? I've tried to hurry them up. Well, try again. I'm not going to wait all day. Well? Yes, Captain Dayton. Yes? The Countess's ship is ready, Miss Blake. Oh, thanks, Bill. What is it? The Countess's ship is ready, Captain Dayton. You're very kind, Captain Dayton. I wouldn't call cracking up that ship of yours being kind. You're giving me one to replace it? Only an old one now. But you'll get one of the late models when they come off the line. Oh, it isn't at all necessary. But it would be thrilling to have a Sky Raider. Well, goodbye, Captain. I'll see you later. Bye, Countess. Oh, Miss Blake. Yes, Captain Dayton? Have Mr. Carey come up here right away. Yes, Captain Dayton. Mary. Is Mr. Carey in? No, he's in the model shop. Shall I get him for you? Tell him I want to see him right away. Hello, Miss Blake. I meant to you ask you... have to pardon me. I'm in a hurry. This is a fine time for a secretary to get back from lunch. Did you talk to Lynx? Yes. And it's none of your business what I do or when I do it. Now, now, I, I was only joking. Well, it's odd that you're not funny. What did he say? Never mind. What I'm interested in is this Blake girl. What about her? Well, there isn't one chance in a hundred that she suspects anything. I'm going to have her watched. What are you talking about? Oh, but I... Captain Dayton, he wants to see you. Oh, how is he? Show any bad effects from his last escape from the jaws of death? Decidedly. His disposition has been knocked into a cocked hat. And uh, the woman fancier here that's been lying dormant in him seems to have been aroused. What do you mean? The Countess. I've always said that business is no place for a jealous woman. You better get in there before he starts hollering. Okay. I'll tell him a few things. tells me that crack up your head kind of changed your disposition. I'm not interested in Miss Blake's personal opinions or yours. What I want to know is when the test model of that new pursuit job will be ready. I'll tell you a good way to find out. Check on it yourself. Isn't he sweet and darling? Yeah. You know, that's the closest Bob and I ever come to having a fight. If I hadn't walked out, I'd have sucked him. What do you suppose is wrong with him? 
Mm. How about talking it over at dinner? I'm sorry, I have a dinner engagement. Yeah? With whom? Oh, just a gentleman. Mm. Just like that. Miss Blake, you know, those are the best dumplings I ever ate. Now, Tim, I'm sure your mothers are just as good, probably better. Are you sure you had enough? Had enough? <laughs> Listen, I'm way up to here. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello. Hello, Mary. This is Bob Dayton. I've been trying to get hold of Carrie. Do you know where he is? No, no, I tried the factory and his apartment, too. Then I'm sure I wouldn't know. He seemed a trifle upset about the argument you had this afternoon. <laughs> I didn't have an argument with him. He seemed to think you did. Oh, Mary, listen to me. Something's happened. I can't talk to you about it over the telephone. I'm at my hunting lodge. Do you know where that is? Yes, of course, but... Can you come up here right away? Tim is here with me. Can I bring him along? Yes, yes, sure. Bring him along. as soon as you learn anything. Okay. Well, this ought to prove to you that there's an organized plan on foot to get rid of you. I'll have to admit that it didn't look accidental. Not unless the man on the Countess plane was an accident. And his hitting you on the head was another accident. All right, all right. I think you ought to turn this matter over to the police. No. No, I'm afraid the police would arrest this fellow who's impersonating me and the men behind him would get away. But they don't have to arrest him. They can watch him, follow him. thing out from every angle. There might be a leak, and at the first warning, this fellow will be gone. I'm going to handle it myself. Barrel 
out of the way. Blast! Away, man! Get away! Blast! Next episode, Sky Raiders is Stark Terror. Oh no! said automobiles were dangerous. After this, I'll stick to planes. They are all of them safe when you, when you drive through explosions.
Are you all right, Miss Blake? Tim, take care of Mary. I'm going down to see how this other fellow may go. And you weren't the least bit frightened? Most of the time I was too excited to be scared, and all well, the rest of the time I was unconscious. Here comes Captain Dayton. Well, the car's a mess. No sign of the driver. He must have jumped out. Probably. There's no use looking for him. What about Miss Blake's car? I guess it'll just have to stay where it is. What are we going to do? Hike. Come on. All right? Mm-hmm. If I wake up in the morning and find out this is just a dream, I'm going to be awful mad. <laughs> You're not dreamy. Just get that plane up here first thing in the morning. And don't forget to call Mary's mother. How about food and supplies? Oh, yes, Ed. Uh, we'll need some groceries and things. Uh, bring a load up with you, huh? Okay, Ed. Good night. It was sweet of you to remember my mother. Most men wouldn't have. Well, I... Uh, uh, Tim, uh, let's go and fix Mary up a room, huh? Okay. so Mary can get to work. So you're the toughest guy to get on the phone I ever saw in my life. <laughs> like me is just an underling. If the police arrest him, we'll never get the head man. Uh, all right. But you don't mind if I disagree with you, do you? If you ever agreed with me, I'd probably never recover from shock. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? I'll, I'll say. Oh, mustn't touch. Come and get it before I throw it out the window. Now you can find out whether Mary's a good cook or not, Ed. Maybe you'll want to withdraw your proposal. Not a chance. They still put up food in cans, don't they? Well, I like that. <laughs> I'll take that egg in the middle. You will, huh? Now, gentlemen, you think I could qualify as a housewife for some good husband? Which automatically excludes all men present. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Tim is the only one that has good possibilities. He's too young. Well, there's nothing like catching them young and training them. Come on, Tim, let's clean up. <laughs> Believe me, if I was older... There, you see? I still think this is a matter for the police. Now, will you stop worrying about the police? I'm going to handle this in my own way. Boy, it's going to be fun staying up here with Captain Dayton and learning to fly. I must say, a boy couldn't have a better instructor. Thank you, Mary. Uh, do you think that Claire woman is connected with this in any way? Sure she is. You can keep your eye on her if you want to, but I think you'll be wasting your time. Well, what do we do now? I'll take you and Mary back to the municipal airport in the monoplane and then bring it back here. Let's go. 7XLT4, BY Coy, 984RD, BAT46Y, NO, sword. that's all. Well, isn't that something? What do you make of it? Well. Teal was found in a canyon dead, his car wrecked. The girl's coupe was found on the side of a hill, 50 yards off the road. He was supposed to be following her. Add it up for yourself. No, you add it up. I can't make anything but zero out of it. What do you expect? 
suspect. That's all you've got in your head. You're so brilliant. Maybe you had the answer at the tip of your red fingernails. No, I haven't yet. But I will have. Yeah? What are you going to do? I have Hess following that dizzy secretary of Dayton's. Said the girl's gone to bed. Where is he? He's in the telephone booth. Tell me to get back to the house and stay there until somebody comes to relieve you. Get back to the house and stay there until you're relieved. There's something mighty funny going on around here, and I'm going to find out what it is. Well, ship, Captain Dayton. You like it, Tim? I like it. I'll say. Good. It's yours. Mine? You aren't kidding, Captain Dayton. No, I'm not. It's yours. So be careful you don't crack it up. Do you think I could fly it? Well, you're doing all right right now. Oh, boy, it sure is swell. Huh? <laughs> Come on. Take over. This is easy. Keep the nose on it. I will. But don't you think it'll arouse suspicions if you're not at the plant? Mother's going to call him up in the morning and tell him I'm ill. I still don't understand why you can't give Bob the information over the telephone. Uh, well, that isn't the main reason why I'm going up to the lodge. No. What is the main reason? Tim is going to make his first solo flight in the morning, and I'd like to be there to see it. Say, I'd like to be there myself. I'm sorry, but one of us has to stay at the plant. I get it. I've been framed. <laughs> Where's Miss Blake? She's ill. I'm substituting for her. Oh. Is Captain Dayton in? Yes. Shall I tell him you wish to see him? No, uh, I'll just go in. Just what do you think you're doing? Oh, what's the matter with what I'm doing? Practically everything. Hey, what's the idea? The idea is that Dayton doesn't smoke. He doesn't read detective magazines during office hours, and he doesn't keep his feet up on the desk. Uh. I've never seen two men that look so much alike that could act so different. All right, all right, keep your shirt on. I can't sit here all day and twiddle my thumbs. Well, it wouldn't hurt you to learn something about the aviation business. When is that test ship going to be ready? Next week. The general's coming Friday. You've got to get out of here before then. Why, what's the hurry? There's something wrong. Hmm? I don't know what it is. There's something wrong. I don't like that Blake damsel. <laughs> Hello, Miss Blake. Gee, I'm glad to see you. You know, I'm going to solo today. That's the main reason I came, Tim. Hello, Mary. Hello. How's my double doing? That worm. Oh, I could have mistaken him for you is more than I can understand. <laughs> he even had me guessing at the plane wreck. What's going on? They're rushing the new pursuit job through. They are? They're scheduled for a test on Friday. You know what that means. Mm-hmm. They're going to try and get away with it. Uh-oh. Well, it's quite a while till Friday. 
How about watching Tim earn his wings? Good. I tell you, I don't like this. Why don't you tell the police about it? Yeah. Why don't I tell the police and have Mr. Lynx... Hello? This is Miss Claire. I just saw Dayton. He's up in the mountains in a cabin. Got an airplane. The girl in the kid are with him. Are you crazy? Or have you been drinking? I haven't been drinking, and I'm not crazy. I tell you, I saw him. All right. All right, get back there. Watch him. And let me know what he does. What was it? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. It would only make you worry more if I told you. Miss Claire, you... Done the order I just got from Captain Dayton. What was that? He wants to take it up on a preliminary test as soon as we're ready. Well, how soon can you have it ready? Two hours. But it shouldn't go up yet. Curtis, what would you think if I told you that Captain Dayton uh, wasn't Captain Dayton? Well, uh, well, I'd say you were crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. like an expert. He's doing all right in the air. I only hope he can land it. Don't worry, he'll land it all right.
it out, Tim, old boy. Bring it out. He's bringing it in like a feather. You've certainly earned your wings. Oh, gee, thanks. But don't you think it's a little early in your career for stunt flying? Yes, Tim, you're very bad. You almost scared me out of 10 years' growth. Look, I wasn't stunt flying. I was more frightened than you were, I bet. What happened? The fire extinguisher caught in the controls, jammed him up. I just saw it in time. There you are, Miss Blake. We've got a flyer with a clear head. And you have a secretary with a nervous breakdown. <laughs> gee, I'm sorry. I almost lost my head, Captain Dayton. Not to mention your body. Important thing is you didn't. Hey, we'd better get back to the lodge. Carrie may be trying to get hold of us. Come on. Department. They think I was crazy too. Pursuit ship this afternoon. What I do is none of your business. Now, will you stop annoying me? You're not going to take that ship up. Is that so? You know, you must be crazier than I thought you were. Keep talking that way and you'll end up in a nut house. I'm not crazy. And you're not Dayton. If you think I'm not Dayton, why don't you call the police? I don't need the police to stop you from taking that ship. Really? Are you going to stop me? Yes. <laughs>
You mustn't say anything about this. Mr. Carey has been acting very strange lately. He apparently went completely out of his head and attacked Captain Dayton, and it would just create scandal if it got around. Oh, I wouldn't say a word. It would be awful if they knew about Mr. Carey. Yes, it would. Just act as though nothing has happened. And if anyone asks for Captain Dayton, why, say he's out. Yes, Miss Claire. How is he? Colder than a mackerel. He's all right. Hey, that was no love tack you gave him. Never mind that. What were you two fighting about? He accused me of not being Dayton. Naturally. He'd know Dayton was alive. I can't figure out how he lived through that crash. Well, don't sprain your brain. Your job is to get that ship out of here, quickly. I told him to get it ready two hours ago. Well, put some pressure on them. All right. What are you going to do about Kerry? I'll take care of him. Say, what's the matter with Dayton, anyhow? Wanting to take that pursuit job up before it's ready. I don't ask Dayton questions. I do what he tells me to do. Yeah, but the Army test ain't scheduled for another week yet. Who forget the Army test and get that ship ready? How much longer is it going to be? I'm rushing it all I can, Captain Dayton. Well, hurry it up. I can't wait all day. His disposition sure ain't what it used to be before that crack-up. Everything seems to be going haywire around here. Harry's off his beans, saying Dayton isn't Dayton. What did you say? Nothing. Get back to work. How do you feel, Mr. Carey? Oh, my head. I'll be all right. What happened? You had a fight with Captain Dayton. Dayton? Oh, yeah, yeah. Where is he? I think he went for the doctor. He was quite worried about you. Yeah? Yeah, I guess he was. It's ringing. I'll answer it. Hello. Hello, Tim. This is Ed Carey. Tell Captain Dayton that... It was Mr. Carey. He sounded terribly excited. He said there was something to tell you. Then there was a thud, sounded like somebody was falling, and he didn't say anything more. Something's wrong. Yeah. Someplace. Yeah. I'll let you worry about that. Say, that looks like Captain Dayton's monoplane. Not only looks like it, it is. Well, that's the new pursuit ship. Are they trying to steal it? Looks like it, Tim. That's all right. All right? What do you mean? If I'm not mistaken, they'll lead us right to the head man of the outfit. Oh, I'm glad we got here in time. That makes two of us, Tim. All we have to do is to stay above him so he can't see us and follow him. How are you going to keep up with that ship? It'll do 400 miles an hour or better. It won't do any more than 200 for him. Why not? That's a little secret that nobody knows but me. Chauffeur, Captain Dayton. Fine. But what I've been trying to figure out for the last couple of hours is why I was crazy enough to let you come along. Well, you didn't think I was going to stay up in the mountains alone, did you? Captain Dayton, 
Jordan. I didn't know Miss Clay could pilot a plane. Sure, Tim. She used to be one of the best women flyers in the country. What do you mean, used to be? Captain Dayton. Hmm? Looks like he's going down. Right, Tim. I'll take over, Mary. Secret airport, huh? Well, there she is. There are two men beside the one flying the pursuit ship. And there's a helicopter. Hmm. All right, Cadence. Help that mechanic of yours and get this ship out of sight. But uh, just a minute. You and I have a little unfinished business. The terms on that job were COD. Remember? We'll take care of that little mother at the penthouse. I don't like that word, little. You're not going to get off as easily as you thought, you know? Now they're taking the pursuit ship into the hangar. Two of them are getting into the helicopter. Take over, Mary. You understand what I want you to do? Yes. Follow the helicopter. That's right. Find out where it goes, then come back here. All right. What are you going to do? Get off and walk. I'm going to find out what's going on down there. Come back as soon as possible and land as near here as you can without being seen. Yes. OK. Good luck. It's a long drive. I hope Lady Luck stays with you. Ah, uh, don't worry, Mary. Tell me you were worried about him. Well, if I was, it was a waste of time. Keep above that helicopter. All right. They're going down in the business district. on a building. Well, Tim, I guess we found the headquarters of the head man, as Captain Dayton said. Can you remember which building it is? I think so. You'd better head back to that farm. and get to work.
out of here. Come on. get to work. your belt, because here we go. There goes the sweetest ship I've ever seen. Where are you going? Why, to save that ship. Don't be crazy. You wouldn't stand a chance of that. to go around chasing fire engines. Is Captain Dayton in there? Yes, he is, and he's going to stay there. Captain Dayton? Yeah. Where are you going? 
Mr. Dayton out of there. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. I'll get you some water. <coughs> Say, you sure were lucky to get out of that fire, Captain Dayton. Uh, wait a minute. Aren't you one of the men who helped to steal that ship? Oh, I didn't steal it. I was working for Lynx. But I ain't anymore. What made you change your mind? It's when I found out they were trying to murder you, Captain. Why should you want to protect me? Thanks to you. Well, you saved my brother's life during the World War. Your brother? What was your brother's name? Fred Evans. He was a captain. Captain Evans. Yes, I remember him. Grand guy. How do you happen to be tied up with a, an outfit like this? Well, things were pretty tough and jobs hard to get. I knew it was shady, but I didn't know what low-down rats they were. Who's the head of the outfit? A guy named Lynx. He left here a little while ago in a helicopter. He must be the one Mary and I follow. Probably was, Sonny. Did he uh, land on top of a building? Yeah, right in the business district. Hello. 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 Open it. What's the matter? Can't you get any answer? Anything's wrong with Evans. You know, Lynx, for a fellow who's not supposed to have any nerves, you're awfully jumpy. If I'd known it would upset you so much, I wouldn't have told you about Dayton. It's a good thing you did, finally. I tell you, he's in the mountains. He couldn't have followed me. Uh, maybe he couldn't. And maybe he could. More duck? Yes, sir. I can get the farm on the telephone. Take the helicopter and find out what's wrong. Yes, sir. Tim, you and Mary take this ship back to the factory after you've shown me where Link's penthouse is. What are you going to do? I have some important hey, look. business with... It's the helicopter. Yeah, that's Link's ship. Let's hide out in the farmhouse and see what happens. this way.
got an idea. The man got burned over there on the fire. He's in pretty bad shape. Wait a minute. Who are you? I've been working with Evans, been testing a couple of planes for him. Yeah? Say, that kid's got nerve, all right. Too much for his own good. Where is this guy who was burned? Uh, we got him over there on the farmhouse. All right, we'll have a look at him. What? He's bringing him over here. I'm through with Lynx and his gang, and you're going to be looking at the world through a set of bars. Have you gone crazy, Evans? No, I just got my senses back. Your goose is sure going to be cooked when Lynx hears about this. That'll be Lynx. If it is, tell him everything's all right. Hello? Yes? Yes, Mr. Lynx, this is Evans talking. Where have you been? Been trying to get you on the telephone. Has Murdoch got there yet? Uh, he was here, Mr. Lynx, but he's gone. Everything's all right. Yes, everything's fine. Well, how did Murdoch find things? You all right? He's on his way back here. That's what I was telling you. You worry too much. You talk too much. That's one fault your money isn't guilty of, Lynx. How about the payoff? Perhaps you're not aware of it. It would be a very simple matter to avoid paying you anything. <laughs> now that I know you better, I realize you're capable of almost anything. But I think you'll pay me what I ask. What makes you so sure? The fact that Dayton's still alive. You're liable to need me. So far, I've got only your word that he's alive. And even you admit that you haven't seen him. Your uncertainty on the point is sufficient for the moment. Let's stop quibbling. All right. Make yourself at home, and don't drink too much. Hey, where are you going? To the bank for some of the talking money. I thought you couldn't get out of here without the helicopter. You can, if you know how. Evans, you ought to take my plane back to the factory and uh, take Murdoch with you. Understand? Yep, and I'm sure going to enjoy the last part. Do you know Ed Carey? I do, if you mean uh, Lieutenant Carey, who was with Sky Raiders. That's the one. Report to him. He'll know what to do with Murdoch. You uh, think you can handle him? <laughs> I'll crack him on the head if he gets frisky. <laughs> boy. Well, get going. Come on, you. Mary, I want you and Tim to fly the pursuit ship back to the coast. What are you going to do? Follow you in the helicopter until you show me where that penthouse is. Then what? Now, look, Mary, will you just stop asking questions and do what I ask? Of course, Captain Dayton. Thanks. What do you want me to tell Mr. Carey? I'll phone him now, before we leave. Just when that guy starts to get human, something happens to him. And he freezes up like an icicle. Hello, Ed. This is Bob. We have the pursuit ship and we're starting back with it. Well, it's a long story. I can't tell you now. I just didn't want you to worry. What? Miss Claire clunked you on the head. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Ed. I'm sorry. So long. Claire clunked him on the head.
Murdoch, how was everything? All right. Hey, wait a minute. You're not Murdoch. You're quite right. <laughs> Five two four, car five twenty four. Calling car five two four. Go to seven two nine Kent Street. Investigate. Murdoch, how was everything? All right. Hey, wait a minute. You're not Murdoch. You're quite right. <laughs>
Calling car 524. Car 524. Calling car 524. Car 524. Go to 729 Kent Street. Investigate. suppose happened to Murdoch? How should I know? Well, let's get out of here. It's exactly the amount of intelligence I expected from you. We are staying here. When the police come, I do the talking. Oh. What about him? Dayton? Anybody that falls that far is through talking. There's the police now. It'll take them a little time to find their way up here. That will give you an opportunity to steady your nerves. A drink will help. Come on. This is Felix Links. This is Gaddins. Everything's gone haywire at the farm. That's to be expected when I depend on you for everything. Where are you? In a phone booth about a mile from the farm. Well, what happened? Hmm. You're certainly running through the farm, Gaddins. All right, keep out of sight. I'll get in touch with you when I need you. Goodbye. Why don't you drink it, Kay? Funny, I, I don't feel like drinking just now. Yeah, that is funny. This is the first time I ever saw you when you didn't. Liquor doesn't seem to agree with me when... And what? Well, when I'm upset. You're easily upset, huh? Sorry to hear he was killed. Are you the one he was fighting with? No. There is the gentleman he had a difficulty with. Well, he's the one I want to talk to. And I said people who believed in ghosts were balmy. I don't blame you for being a little confused, Sergeant. I'm not confused. I'm flabbergasted. It's going to be amazingly simple when I explain it to you. Yeah? Yes, quite simple. You see, this gentleman and the victim of the unfortunate accident, by coincidence, look exactly alike. You're telling me. Well, you and he, the other fellow, brothers? No, Sergeant. I'd never even seen him until a few days ago. That's enough of that. Were you responsible for him falling off the roof? No, not entirely. He was a great deal responsible for it himself. Well, he's not in any shape to deny that. What were you fighting about? Who are you? Since 
Since I was a witness of the unfortunate incident, perhaps I'm the best one to explain it. Well, somebody better explain it quick. You see, these two gentlemen, while they look so much alike, are of quite different, shall I say, temperaments. Yeah, yeah, but get to the point. Who are they? One of them is Captain Robert Dayton. Who, the famous flyer? Are you him? The other is a man named Kane, who has been involved in a dangerous plot to steal the pursuit ship that Captain Dayton has built for the Army. He had the temerity to come up here, and the fight resulted. Oh, and you knocked this man Kane off the roof, eh, Captain? Lucky it was him and not you. Unfortunately, Sergeant, this is Mr. Kane. The man who was killed was Captain Dayton. Hey, wait a minute. So that's how it is. You're under arrest, Mr. Kane. Put the cuffs on him, Murphy. Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. What for? That man is a dangerous enemy of the United States government, the head of a spy ring. Yes, if that's so, why didn't you say so before? For the obvious reason that it isn't true. I'm an investment broker interested in the financing of Dayton's airplane factory. Facts which your department can easily check. This fellow almost had me fooled, but he took a drink, and Captain Dayton never drinks. Well, he's not going to fool me. Take him along, Murphy. All right, Sergeant, I'll go with you, but bring him along, too. I'd be glad to go with you, Sergeant, if you consider it necessary. This is your place here, Mr... Felix Lynx, yes, this is my home. Well, I can get you at any time you might be needed. Any time, but I'd be glad to go down with you now. Oh, that's not necessary. Take him along. I suppose it's useless for me to tell you that you're making a mistake you'll regret. Will you save anything you have to say for the FBI? Washington for identification. Right. It won't take long to find out whether or not you're Captain Dayton. I'll be satisfied with what you find out. I only hope you are Captain Dayton. Otherwise, it would be a great loss to aviation. What about this fellow Lynx? Don't worry about him. I have his place guarded and can pick him up at any time. I'm afraid you can't. What do you mean? He won't be there. How could he get away? By a helicopter. Like that thing took off from this roof. Probably the guy we're after is in it. Well, we'll soon find out. We have to search every room in this penthouse. Looks like your guess was right, Murphy. He got away all right. Yes, and in a hurry, I should judge by the looks of this desk. shot down in flames and came out alive? That's right. Ed Carey says that Lady Luck is my personal guardian. I'll say she is. <laughs> Captain Dayton has just been telling me of his war experiences. Then you're convinced he is Captain Dayton. Well, if he isn't, he has a great imagination. We just received word from Washington. I wish to apologize, Captain Dayton. Look at it. That's your job. Well, I'm afraid we fell down badly in one respect. Thanks. Yes. But at least we know there is such a person. Thanks to you. Hello? Yes? It's your call to the coast. They've located your friend, Carey. Thanks. Hello, Ed. This is Bob. I've got some good news for you. I'm in jail. In jail? What are you doing there? A lot of things have happened since I saw you last. I want you to hop in a plane and come and get me. Well, you wouldn't mind waiting in that nice, comfortable jail while a little storm we're having blows over, would you? It isn't exactly ideal weather for flying. Oh. Are Tim and Mary there? No. Aren't they with you? No. No, they started back in the pursuit ship. Well, they aren't here, and I haven't heard from them. You ought to have your head examined. Never mind coming after me. Why? What are you going to do? I'm going to get a plane if I have to steal one. Wait a minute. 
Now I got him to worry about, too. Yes. Yes, Miss Blake. Hey, right, come in, Dad. Oh, Mary, where are you? Hello, Ed. I've never been so glad to hear anybody's voice in my life. Never mind that. Where are you? Somewhere between Salt Lake and Los Angeles. How bad is it? Pretty bad. No visibility. You on the beam? Yes, we're on it. How long ago did you leave Denver? Three hours and 20 minutes. What's been your average airspeed? 175. What's your altitude? 8,000. Not high enough. Go to 12, quick. Tim, Ed says to go to 12,000. We're over the mountains. All right. All right, Ed. We're climbing. Good. Stay at 12,000. Sky Raiders. Dayton calling Sky Raiders. Come in, Sky Raiders. Hello, Bob. You all right? Where are you? Ed, any word from Mary? Yes. She's somewhere west of Salt Lake, over in the Nevada mountains. Dayton calling pursuit ship 544. Dayton calling pursuit ship 544. Go ahead. Bob. Bob, where are you? Bucking the same storm you are, about five hours behind you. Are you all right? Yes, so far. Tim is flying the ship like an old. you answer me? Mary, what happened? Mary, answer me. What's wrong?
Bucking the same storm you are, about five hours behind you. Are you all right? Yes, so far. Jim is flying the ship like an old. Jim, look out! you answer me. Harry, answer me. What's wrong? answer because she's down, cracked up. You understand me? Cracked up because you haven't got the brains of a moron child. Sky Raiders. Calling Sky Raiders. Come in, Sky Raiders. Pull yourself together, Ed. This is no time to go off your beam. I need your help. Yeah, help doing what? Where were they when you last contacted them? Over in the Nevada mountains. She was on the beam. I'm about five hours behind them. By the time I get there, this storm will be over. And it should be daylight. So what? Now listen, Tegan. I haven't time to listen now. So long. I'm sick and tired of bungling and alibis. Then you're not going to alibi his getting away from you when you had him in the penthouse. Shut up. You should have known that Dayton could easily prove his identity. Or did you really think it was Kane? Shut up, I tell you. Save your snarling for someone you can frighten. Relax. Why did you leave Sky Raiders? We're stupid. Don't worry about Sky Raiders. I can get back there whenever I'm ready. And Captain Dayton will welcome me with open arms. Jim, thank goodness you're all right. How's your head feel? Oh, like somebody was trying to split it with a sledgehammer. What happened? Where are we? I don't know, except we're on the ground. I'm lucky to be there in one piece. But let's not talk about that. Go back to sleep. No, no, I, I'm all right. Look, I've got to get you out of this. Morning will be plenty of time to think about that. Then we can fix this radio. I'm over the Nevada mountains now, Ed. We ought to be around here someplace. How much gas you got? Plenty. I filled up and sold eggs. Bob, all during the World War, you had Lady Luck sitting right alongside of you. And she's been with you ever since, every time you went up in the air. Well, I hope she stays with you, because you're going to need her to get out of the mess you're in with me for letting them take that pursuit ship. She's not with me yet. I sent her to take care of Mary and Tim. So stop worrying. I'll find them.
Tim Bryant. You didn't answer. I thought something had happened to you. Well, I guess I didn't hear you. I was looking for some water. How did your head feel? Oh, it's all right. I almost stopped aching. You've got to be careful, Kim. Oh, it's okay. Just a little bump, that's all. Little? You were unconscious for several hours, and I was terribly frightened. Gee, I'm sorry, Miss Blake. It's a pretty bad time to get knocked out. Made it pretty tough on you, I guess. Oh, it wasn't your fault. We could only get that radio fixed. Wouldn't be so bad if we could talk to somebody. If I could just locate the trouble, I could fix it. Gosh, if we hadn't busted the landing gear on the plane, we could take off easy as pie. Pie? I could do with a little pie right now. How about you? Oh, well, me too. Yeah, but we mustn't think about that. Makes me hungry. <laughs> Listen, it's an airplane. There it is. Yell, Tim, yell! Bob, help! Oh, I'm not here! Bob, help! No sign of them yet, Ed. I've covered this section pretty thoroughly. I'll get in touch with you later. He hasn't got a chance. Wait a minute, Ed. I think I... I've located the plane. How about Mary and Kemp? I can't see them. Maybe... Maybe they're in the ship. In the ship? They have you packed up. They've landed in the meadow. Maybe they've gone for help. I hope not. There's nothing around here for miles. There they are. And they're both all right. I'm going down. Stand by. You know, Tim, we've got to get a socket wrench to finish this. Come on. Was it bad? Oh, not so bad that it can't be fixed up. Did you talk to Ed? Yes, I talked to him. It was all I could do to keep him from coming out here. <laughs> I had the same trouble with it. Oh, uh, Tim, how are you feeling now? Oh, my head aches a little, but I'm all right. Had a boy. And how are you, Mary? Everything that was the matter with me was completely cured the minute I knew you saw us. Um, except, uh... Except what? My stomach thinks my mouth's blockaded. <laughs> <laughs> You're hungry, eh? A little. All right, I'll leave it up to you. Shall I go out and catch a deer barehanded, or...? Fix the undercarriage. I'll take the undercarriage, fricassee. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say you're all right, both of you. Do you think you can handle that two-motor job? You bet we can, can't we, Miss Blake? I don't see why not in this kind of weather. Good. I'll get busy on the pursuit ship, and then I'll lead you in. How long will it take? Oh, still thinking of your stomach, huh? You bet I am. <laughs> well, about an hour should do it. Come on, Tim, we've got to find that rent. All right. What's the matter? What's the matter? It's after 4 o'clock. You ought to be here by now. Yes, I know, Ed, but we had a little trouble with the instruments. Well, we're all ready to go. Good. I've got a dinner date, and I won't settle for breakfast. Ed's in the middle of a nervous breakdown. Ah, he's probably jealous. I'd be jealous, too, if my girl was stranded in the mountains with two other men. I'll have you understand, Captain Robert Dayton, that I'm nobody's girl. On your way. So long, Tim. So long. Well, thank goodness.
Davis are both up and on their way. 4.30, Mr. Carey. Yeah, they ought to be here by 6. You can take this. Nothing can happen now. So it's nice up there, is it? Well, it isn't down here. It's getting worse, Mr. Carey. And it's getting worse. So help me, Titan. Stand by, and I'll tell you what to do. Harry, did you hear what Ed said? Yes, he said there was fog. And we're in it now. Are you close enough to see me? Yes, I can see you. You think you can follow me in? Yes, I can if... Wait a minute. What is it now? Tim, what's the matter? I don't know. My head feels kind of numb. Well, let me take the controls. Harry. Harry, what's the matter? What is it, Mary? Answer me. Everything's all right. Tim just felt kind of faint. You're not frightened, are you, Mary? No, I'm not frightened a bit. Good girl. Are you on your beam? Yes, Bob. Wait. Yes, Bob? Get out on your field extension. You may be able to see us. Right. That means we're over the field. Then we circle and look for an opening. Stay with me. Follow me in. You're almost to the hangar. Mary, why didn't you follow me in? I lost you, Bob. Something's happened to Tim. Now listen, Mary. Take it easy, I... Bob. Don't excite her. Okay. Mary, you've got to forget about Tim now. Your job's to bring that ship in. I'll try, Bob. Tell me what to do. That's fine, Mary. You're doing all right. I'll circle the field again for a landing. Pick up the same runway, but come in a little more to your left. That's it, Mary. You're doing fine. I can see you now. for those wires.
your nose up, you're too low. Look out for those wires. Look out for those wires! I'm glad to say the young man has only a slight concussion. He'll be fine in a week or two. <sighs> What's the matter, Mary? What are you crying for? Well, I'm only crying because Jim is going to be all right. <laughs> well, it's all right, Ed. Women always do that. If I were you, Captain, I'd watch my step. If she smiles like that, she's got murder in her heart. Well, I said still goes. I think she was stupid to run out. There's no reason for her to leave Sky Rays. What have you got to say to that, Ed? I think you've got a colossal nerve criticizing anybody for stupidity. Listen, you Calm little... down, Cadence, and save your energy for something more important. You say you can get back there, Ennis? How? By simply walking in the front door. Yeah? Are you going to explain your running away? Suppose I save that for Captain Dayton. Ennis, if you weren't so valuable to me, I'd like to choke yes, today. Yes, Felix, but as you said, I am valuable. I had no reason to believe the man wasn't you, Captain Dayton. He certainly looked like you. I think you were perfectly justified in doing what you did, Miss Clare. You're right, Kane looked enough like me to be my twin brother. Now, you'll have to admit that, Ed. Sure, sure, can look like you. Well, then why won't you admit that Miss Clare's in the right? I won't admit it because I don't believe it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got a lot of work to do. Didn't you convince him, Ed? Sure, I convinced him. That I haven't got any more intelligence than a three-year-old moron child. You mean that he's going to let... Let her work? That guy can't see any deeper into a gal and her false eyelashes and rouged lips. Hello, folks. Why, Tim, what are you doing out of the hospital? Yes, what's the idea, young man? The doctor said it'd be a week. Well, Captain Dayton had a talk with the doctor and he changed his mind. There you are. There's nothing fixed or substantial or real in the world. Nothing you can depend on if that guy gets his hands on it. I give up. Well, Tim, now that you're back, all fixed up, in good condition, suppose we get to work. Certainly, Captain Dayton. A anything special we're going to do? Yes. We're going to build about a half a dozen models. Now, here are the tentative plans of our new bomber. And I want you to test it in the wind tunnel first. You mean the bomber you're going to build for the government? That's right. And you're going to let me work on it? Yep. And I expect good work, too. Don't worry, Captain Dayton. You'll get the best model that's ever been built. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, go to it. <laughs> I'm through. I'm not going to stick around this dump any longer. I've had my fill. Take it easy, Ed. Take it easy. You know you're not going to quit. Bob needs you. Needs me? What does he need me for? As a steadying influence. Ah. Think what would happen to him if you weren't around. Steadying influence. I may be a steadying influence on him, but he isn't on me. Look at that. You know you're putting that on. Your hand doesn't shake that much. But well, if I stick around that guy any longer, why does he have to take that dame back? And why does he hire that mechanic Evans? He was working for the people that tried to steal the ship. Why does he do those crazy things? What happened to Murdoch? Did the police get anything out of him? I don't know. Last I heard, he wouldn't talk. Nobody's been near him that could have been connected with him. They're too smart. Well, we won't have anything to worry about after Friday. We'll test the pursuit ship, the government will okay it, and we'll go into production. 
Nothing to worry about. I suppose you think Dayton doesn't intend to fly that ship. He's not going to fly it. Why not? Because I'm going to stop him. Captain Dayton, I'm in thorough accord with your secretary's views in this matter. I do not think you should fly this test. In fact, I take the liberty of requesting you not to. General Fletcher, did you ever hear of insubordination? Do I understand that you're accusing me of insubordination? Oh, no, sir. But I'm surprised that you tolerate it in my secretary. Miss Blake, as soon as I come back, remind me to fire you. Yes, Captain Dayton. It's a price I'd gladly pay to keep you from making that test. I was thinking of quitting anyway. Hey, Mary, wait a minute. You can't do this. I, I can't get along without you. Dayton wasn't going to fly the test. Thought you were going to stop him, Mary. Well, even if I didn't, I'm glad I tried. Why are you glad? Because I found out how important I am. He can't get along without me. Oh, he told you that. Yep. Been kind of soft on Dayton, aren't you, Mary? My interest in Captain Dayton is purely business. Oh, Bob, be careful. As you say, your interest in whether or not he breaks his neck is purely commercial. on that ship. Cadman's hands, you mean. Too bad he's so butterfingered. All right, all right. We've been held up too long as it is. How soon can you start making delivery? Well, that's Carrie's department, General. I'm afraid you'll have to talk to him about that. Well, how about it, Carrie? There are only a few details standing between us and production. Captain Long's been authorized to take care of those. Suppose you two get about it. Stay with him, Captain. Hound the life out of him. We've got to have ships. No further delay. Yes, sir. I'm sure we can depend upon you, Ed. Thank you, General. This way, Captain Long. And now, Captain Dayton, you and I have a little additional business. Come right in, General. Thank you. I rather imagine you know what that is. Now, don't tell me the Army has finally gotten around to this. <laughs> and approved it. You really grooved one that time, Bob. I'm confident it'll increase the efficiency of your bomb site 50%. And that's really something. It's dangerous. Will you shut up? How can I hear what they're saying if you keep babbling like that? I still don't like it. Well, what happened? What did you find out? They're going to test the new Sky Raiders bomb site in the safety and seclusion of the Hawaiian Islands. Yes, yes, yes. When are they leaving? Give me a light, will you, Felix? Yes, you are without a doubt the most thoroughly exasperating female. Darling, if you don't mind, I don't like the word female. All right, you don't like it. When are they leaving? Tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock on a clipper from the naval base at San Pedro. Captain Dayton is going along to supervise the tests. They'll have that gadget with them? Naturally. Although I think I'd give it a little higher classification than gadget. Skip it. All right, fellas. I tell you what we'll have to do. Yes. Get the hydroplane serviced. Cadence, you go with me.
Pretty soft, huh, Tim? Dayton and Murray get a trip to the Hawaiian Islands, and we have to stay here and work. I'll say it is. Boy, I'd sure like to see those hula dances. Tim, I'd expect that from Carrie, but you're much too young. Captain Dayton. I'm terribly sorry, but General Fletcher has been detained. When will he get here? In about an hour. Now, we can either go aboard the ship and wait for him there, or go back to headquarters, whichever you prefer. We'll go aboard. Uh, wait just a moment. Please. Surely. How'd you work it, Mary? He doesn't need you. Maybe not, but I needed a vacation. And besides, I used pressure. Pressure? I threatened to quit. And let that be a lesson to you. If you're really important to the boss, there's not much he won't do for you. Important. Good secretaries are a dime a dozen. Go oh, ahead. Uh, we're going to be delayed about an hour. No need for you and Tim to wait around. Uh, you might be needed at the plant. Well, so long, boys. So long. Lieutenant Carey, wouldn't it be swell to take a trip to the Hawaiian Islands? Yeah, yeah, sure would. Say, Tim, do you ever get hushes? You mean about things that are going to happen? Yeah, something like that. Usually bad things. Well, I, I never get any about bad things, just good ones. But they never seem to happen. Mine well, are always bad, and they usually do happen. You got one now? Yeah. Is it about Captain Dayton and Miss Blake? Well, it's not quite clear, but I don't think it's about them. Well, maybe it's about the factory and the pursuit ship. Maybe. Tim, I guess my hunch was... What are you doing here? Mr. Hinchfield sent me in. Captain Dayton was supposed to have left a letter for him, and the secretary told me to come in and look for it. Well, listen, Miss Clare, I still don't trust you as far as I can throw you with a broken arm. What you trust or don't trust doesn't concern me at all. All right, get out and stay out. Don't get in my way anymore than you have to. I assure you, I won't. Lieutenant Carey, do you really think she was looking for a letter? I do not. Hey, look at this. There's a microphone in this lamp. That's what she was after. We can trace the wire. Yeah. And I'm betting they'll lead us right to her desk in Hinchfield's office. suspicions of the Claire woman. I'd like to hear Dayton explain her out of this. Yeah, Lieutenant Carey, but uh, I don't see why you suspected Mr. Hinchfield. I suspected him, Tim, because he denied being mixed up in it before he knew what it was he was mixed up in. Say, you're pretty smart. Yeah, tell that to the boss. I might get a rage. Hey, wait a minute. We gotta get hold of Dayton. Stop that ship if possible. Miss Blake, they build these ships stormproof. Excuse me, Captain Dayton. Oh, yes, certainly. Lieutenant Carey wishes to speak to you. Now, what is he? I don't know, sir. He seemed quite excited. Well, he always is. He said it was urgent. <laughs> Of course, it's only supposition, Bob, but the fact remains that the microphone was in your office when you and General Fletcher were discussing the bomb site. All right, all right. What do you recommend? that you turn around and come back until you have adequate protection. You better take something to your nerves, Ed. We're out over the ocean. That's plenty of protection until we get to the islands, and there we have a few guns and battleships. Now stop worrying, will you? All right, all right. But unless I miss my guess, you'll be hollering for help, and I'll be listening. So long, Mother Hubbard. Go back, you knitting. That's what I'm up against. The guy's crazy. Are you sure? 
sure they discovered the microphone? Of course I'm sure. I hid in the closet and saw Carrie and the kid trace the wires to my disk. Did you hear what they were talking about? Enough to know that if you're going to hijack that bomb site, you better do it before Carrie gets a chance to warn Dayton. Whatever. Claire said that Carrie's wise. Then we better hijack the bomb site before he warns Dayton. I'll take over. I don't know anybody who worries as much as Ed does. Do you, Mary? Well, maybe Ed worries too much, because you don't worry enough. No. And you think a happy meeting between Bob and Ed be just about right? <laughs> Davis Blake? <laughs> well, I guess I'm a little bit on the worrying side myself. But frankly, General, I don't like the idea of their knowing about the bomb site. We don't know for sure that they do know about it. Well, that storm isn't getting any better. Hey, look out! I wonder what he thinks he's doing. All right, they've seen us. I'll disable one of their motors and force him to land.
don't like the idea of their knowing about the bomb site. We don't know for sure that they do know about it. I'll disable one of their motors and force them to land. Huh? What was that? Sounded like a machine gun. One of the motors is missing. There's a nut flying around out here in a the hydroplane. There he is. Sounds as though he shot one of our motors out. I think we're going to have to go down, General. We're on fire. Let me talk to my headquarters. Calling Sky Raiders. Hello? Hello? One moment, please. You'd pay a little attention sometimes to what I tell you. All right, I'll send out a Coast Guard. Where are you? Just a minute. Tell him where we are. One moment, please. Now, don't be frightened, Mary, but we've got to put these preservers on. Are we going to crash? Oh, I don't think so, but it's best to play safe. What do we do if we are forced down? Don't forget, Lady Luck. Coast Guard Station. Any sign up? There's a Coast Guard cutter near the location you gave us. Nothing sighted yet. We'll let you know. There it is. Looks like it's on fire. It's about to abandon ship. The gasoline will explode any minute. Too bad if they weren't. It's gone. We haven't got a chance. Let's get out of here. Here, you take these. I'm seeing things. What do you mean? I think I saw a hydroplane take off behind the wreck just now. The hydroplane, all right. It's gone. bad enough to be wearing an enlisted man's uniform. Has to be a seaman's. <laughs> <laughs> Which would you rather be, a dead general or a live sailor? When I was a youngster at West Point, I'd suffered any ignominy in preference to being an admiral. But right now, well, I guess I'm not so rabid on the subject. <laughs> How are the pilot and uh, radio operator, Commander? Well, I'm afraid they're going to be all right. That's fine. How do you feel, Miss Blake? Oh, I'm fine. Except I'm rather ashamed of myself for the way I acted. I guess I was really pretty scared. I haven't got a corner on that. When I heard that boat whistle, it sounded like Gabriel's trumpet to me, too. We can all thank Ed Carey. We didn't answer Mr. Gabriel's call. Oh, uh, by the way, Commander, did you send my uh, wireless to Carey? Oh, yes. But we haven't had a reply yet. Well, don't worry. There'll be one a mile long waiting for us when we get to Honolulu. <laughs> How soon do you propose to resume your trip to the islands, General? Immediately, as soon as this tub of yours can get us back to the mainland. <laughs> Better take something with guns on it this time, General. A battleship, or at least a bomber. <laughs> I subscribe to that heartily. I really want to reach Honolulu this time. Yes. <laughs> What's that for? That's for success. 
with you pulling for it, Mary, it's in the bag. Congratulations, Captain Dick. Thank you, General. said you wanted to see me, Lieutenant Carey. Yeah, read that. Gee, they're getting back Friday. What do you think the important matter is? Don't ask me riddles. But you can make a bet at something entirely different from anything we can figure out. Oh, boy, I can hardly wait. Don't you bother to knock before you bust into private offices, Hedgefield? When is Dayton coming back? If it's anything about the business, you can tell me. It's about Miss Clare. What about Miss Clare? Nothing I can tell you, Carrie. When will Captain Dayton get back? Friday. Friday. That'll be too late. You can't do it. What's the matter with you, Hedgefield? What are you mumbling about? Nothing. Nothing. But it's about time he came back. He had no business going away and leaving the factory in incompetent hands. What do you mean, incompetent hands? Get out of here before I throw you out. And uh, listen to me, Carrie. Get out! <laughs> he sure got out quickly, didn't he? Yeah, just a fraction too quick. I wish I'd crown him. Get that book, will you, Tim? You bet. Incompetent hands. Now I know what it's like to be on the other end. On the other end of what? This book. I've dodged out that door just ahead of it plenty of times. You mean Captain Dayton has thrown it at you? I wish I had a dollar for every time. Well, let's get back to work. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, could I ask you one question? Sure, shoot. What happened to Miss Claire? Well, apparently she vanished in a cloud of pale blue smoke. Yes, but didn't you tell the police about finding the dictaphone wires leading from in here to her desk? That I did, Tim, but Miss Claire is a very slippery young lady. To put it vulgarly, she scrammed. Yeah, but Mr. Carey... Now, wait oh, a minute. You said one question, and you're already on your third. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Well, I hope they catch her. The police, I mean. No, unless I'm a very bad judge of Miss Clare, she's a long way from here. <laughs> I tell you, I'm not going to put up with it any longer. Would you mind telling me just what you're bellowing about? This lying around, doing nothing. It's getting on my nerves. Where's Lynx? Why haven't we heard from him? Felix has many interests all over the country. As long as Captain Dayton is away, he doesn't feel he's needed here. What's he going to do about Dayton? What do you think? If you mean getting rid of him, what good will that do? If anything happened to Captain Dayton, it would be a great blow to American aviation. He has an odd habit of keeping all the plans to his inventions in his head. What about Hinchfield? He's been scared bad ever since the dictaphone wires were found. Felix told me to use my own judgment about Hinchfield. I think Hess will take care of him if it becomes necessary. returning next Friday. That's good news. What's good about it? Carrie has convinced him that we're all tied up with links. So what? When Dayton returns, this isn't going to be a very healthy place for foreign agents. What are you going to do about it? Take care of myself. Why don't you try taking care of Dayton? I'll have no part in that. No, I'll have no part in it. Idea, yes. That's what I was just going to ask you. Baggage and all the hurry. Why, I'm going to San Francisco on a business trip. You don't mind if I ride a little ways with you, do you? What do you mean? I mean, get going. Now listen, Hess. I'm not running out on you, if that's what you're thinking. I said get going. I wouldn't try that again if I were you. Now drive. 
Where to? Frisco, over the old ridge route. Sorry for poor old Hinchfield. Just what happened to him? Oh, I don't know exactly. You see, I, uh, I jumped before the car went over the cliff. Just another driver who fell asleep at the wheel. Hmm? Well, suppose now we get ready for Captain Dayton's homecoming. <laughs> Romantic. That guy doesn't need sleep or dream anything but airplanes. An airplane could be quite romantic at the right time. Hey, hey, will you keep your eyes on the road? These things are dangerous. Oh, oh, there's a laugh. The guy spends his life doing crazy things in airplanes, and he's afraid of an automobile. Bob promised to give up stunt flying. Promised? How many times is that? This time, it's final. Next thing, you'll be believing in Santa Claus. Hey, Bob, what was that important thing you were going to tell me? Never mind, never mind. I'll tell you when we get to the factory. Pull up alongside, force them off the road. Someone's trying to pass us, Ed. Move over, Ed. Don't be a road hog. I hate horn floors. Cut it on them. Ed, he's got a gun. I don't care if he's got a cannon. But don't be crazy yet. Pull over. Pull over, I tell you. Sorry to put you through this. It was just my stupid temper. Oh, it's all right, Ed. I guess it's lucky you did get mad. If you'd been sensible, there's no telling what they would have done to Bob. Does that mean you forgive me? And the things are going to be just the same as they were before you went away? Luncheon once in a while? If I work on it real hard? Well, practically the same, Ed, but not quite. What do you mean, not quite? How was it, Bob? 100% bad for all of them. Ah, oh, don't you think that Miss Claire was in the same car with him? All right, all right, Ed. So I was wrong about her, and you were right. 
What do you want me to do? Admit that women have your number and leave them alone. What do you mean women have got my number? Now, Bob, remember you promised not to have any more fights with this. <sighs> I'm sorry, darling. Darling? Say, what is this? Shall we tell them? I think we might as well, darling. They'll find out sooner or later anyway. You mean that... That Miss Blake is a... That Mary's your new boss. And incidentally, uh, Mrs. Dayton. Well, I'll be doggone. You see what I mean, Ed, about an airplane being romantic if you have it in the right place? Yeah? Where did you have it? Over a volcano. Oh. <laughs> what? Here we go again. <laughs>